Hello and welcome. So, um, I'm an animation director over at Micros Animation in Paris. I've always uh, really loved animation ever since I was small. Um, I remember when I was really little, sitting in front of The Little Mermaid and uh, watching Sebastian singing these songs, The Little Crab, and uh, writing down all the lyrics for it. And I've always just loved uh, cartoons. It just took me to a different world altogether. And um, one of the things that I absolutely love in animation is also Red and Stimpy. Uh, that's always been like a big, uh, been a big fan of that as well. Yeah. So I've always just loved animation, loved filmmaking, storytelling. It's always just been a really uh, passion of mine actually. So it's awesome that I get to do this at this you know, stage in my life. Could you tell us a little bit about the different projects you have been working on? Oh, there's uh, a lot of different projects. Um, I've been working on uh, a lot of intellectual IPs, uh, intellectual properties, and uh, doing the animation development for lots of these uh, shows. And at the same time, uh, I've worked on, more recently, Gus the Tsubitsi Night. Earlier to that, Sonic Boom, um, Alvin and the Chipmunks, um, right from the beginning all the way through different five, six seasons of it, um, and yeah, many other shows. Can we ask, maybe, if you've got a favorite one? Oh, uh, they're all my favorite. <laughs> I believe, honestly, that when you're doing animation, you should really be invested in what you're doing and like fall in love with the project. Like You have to fall in love. You have to find the things that absolutely drive your passion and make you interested in it. You know, you have to find the nice character that you identify with and uh, who you like to be. And uh, it's what I always did when I was small, watching cartoons. So that's how I kind of like, uh, started out. Yeah. Great, thank you. So now in your current position, um, can you explain and share with the audience that we have today what were the main challenges that you have faced uh, and how you managed to overcome them? Main challenges. Let me take my book out. <laughs> um, there's always been a lot of challenges that you'll find in animation. It's uh, part of the job, and uh, one of the biggest challenges is when you're on a long-running show. You have lots of people with you. You have a huge team, and uh, it's so important. Like what I was saying, that falling in love with animation is so important. Um, it's important to keep the spirit of the team really strong and make sure that like they are invested in the project because really what they what you when you when you love doing something it will show on screen you want to have people that are like um, um, really invested in what they're doing and be able to contribute ideas that's when they really come up with nice ideas and say you know unique stuff like hey why don't we try that and let's try to do something else and so that's really important so keeping that spirit up over a long period of time can be a big challenge so it's really important that we do that I like we do a lot of animation workshops uh, a lot of improv classes also mainly just to kind of um, make sure that people get loose, you know, like, they, it's, it's okay to be silly. We're making cartoons, so, you know, ha have fun with what you're doing. From the different projects you have been working on so far, were there specific challenges? Uh, you mentioned Alvin and the Chipmunks, you mentioned Sonic Boom, you mentioned uh, plenty Gus. of other projects, can Gus, obviously. Uh, were there any specific challenges on the one or on, on the other? Um, in the current role that I'm in, um, some specific challenges that we've had is um, really keeping things consistent between animators. That can always be uh, tricky sometimes, especially with a long-running show, you have people who come and go sometimes. Um, so you also have a lot of new people and you want new people to come on board and immediately get uh, rolling with it as soon as they get on. So that's super important that you know, clarity and the creative vision for the show is really well uh, maintained and it's communicated well, but there's good communication between artists. Um, another challenge is also we're in a creative business, so there's always people with a lot of passion and it's nice. I like, I like to be challenged at my job and feel like, uh, you know, when someone is really strong about an idea, it's really because they feel passionate about this idea and they, they feel that it's a, it's a nice idea. So you want to be able to hear them out and make sure that they feel heard and um, that the ideas are something that you're collaboratively doing. That's a, that's a big challenge, actually. Yeah. I understand. And um, particularly on those series, there are plenty of different characters. And I guess in animation, you have always to find the personality of each of them. Yes. So, as you were mentioning, it's quite of a challenge to uh, get people involved in over the long run. So, how do you get to uh, ensure you know, there is uh, 
the consistency over time? Uh, do those characters evolve as well? And how you make them evolve uh, from one season to another? Yeah. Because sometimes you get into more of in-depth yes. their personalities. Yeah, true. Um, so it's it's hard. Like at the beginning, when you're especially starting off with, and I've worked on the animation development of a lot of shows, and uh, you see a character, you really feel strongly that they're going to be a certain way and then after that you're seeing them and maybe that doesn't work. A lot of times it's the voice that lends itself a lot to the character because sometimes you can act out a character and if it doesn't sit well with the voice, you're not going to feel like it's coming from their character, it should feel like it's coming from inside their body and not feel like, you know, something that's, somebody stuck a, a voice onto them. So. Uh, it, it, it's gradual. It's something that, like you know, you keep trying. And it's also important. Story is super important as well. The relationship of this character with all the other primary characters that they're working with is so important um, because you want to make them feel authentic and feel like they genuinely belong in this world and that they, um, that, you know, like it, it feels real. It doesn't feel like as if it's something that is. Uh, how do you say like? It, sometimes you, you can very easily make a character feel like it's stuck together and there are some characters that you feel like oh that is that character and that you feel like connected with yeah. So, yeah, you can identify them directly uh, from star yeah, yeah. and uh, not directly from star but you need to really build that up uh, little by little and uh, really act out the character I think that's such an important thing to do uh, even if it's privately in your bedroom like it doesn't matter like you sit in front of the mirror and make a fool out of yourself you know make a fool out of your friends and ask them also what they think about it and whether it feels like it's really that character you know? So currently we are preparing the season two of Ghostly TBT Night. Yes. Um, are there any other projects you would like to unveil to people? Because there are plenty of things happening at Micros Animation yes. currently. Uh, so I can't speak too much about it, but currently at the moment we're working on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with uh, Netflix and we're looking out for people, so those out there uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we also have Taika with TT attached with the project, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I can't really speak more about the show itself, but I do know that it's just a lovely talent pool over at Netflix that we're collaborating with, and we have a great team also at Micros um, that is super collaborative and communicative, so this has got me, and we're talking about chocolate all the time, so, you know, what's better than that? <laughs> yeah, we don't have any chocolate around you today, but there are a lot of sweets. <laughs> what would you say then? Uh, to the people who are listening to us today and uh, watching you, uh, what would you say to them to come and join us on those incredible projects? For people who want to come and join us? Oh, them? yes. Um, make sure that you send in your reel, like we're waiting to send it in right away. Um, one, like, you know, there are a lot of cliches like, you know, um, believe in what you're doing, apply for what you really uh, love doing, like don't do something because someone else, everybody's doing it, do what you feel like you love doing, that's super important. Um, and avoiding the simplification also, like you'll always feel like you're not ready. You'll always feel like, you know, it's, I feel like I'm not ready, like you have to do lots of shows, like uh, you'll always feel like you're not ready and that's part of the challenge, so don't feel afraid of it, just jump into it and really uh, try it. And even if you don't get it the first time, like at least you, if you're lucky, maybe you'll get some feedback uh, on it. And that'll just help you grow, but keep sharing what you're doing and make sure that like you know you're growing. And, uh, don't ever um, not attempt thinking that oh my friends. We live in a world where like you can see the best show reels. If you just type the best show reels, you see all the best show reels. So you know it's very easy to be uh, lost in this thought that you're um, like everybody's doing great stuff, but that is just a filtered thing. People have worked their way up there, so it's really important that you try. Make sure that you have a nice wide variety of range. Again, it depends on what you're really interested in doing, but like uh, have a range of uh, material that you're on there. The quantity doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a short reel, but make sure that that short reel is really nice. Like really spend time with quality rather than spending time on quantity. Um, that's one of the most key things. And uh, you could show a good, if you're getting into character animation, you want to be able to show like, you know, some strong acting skills, some strong body mechanics as well. Um, sometimes some people are like really good at something and animation is a very well, wide business. So you can actually do, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a martial arts clip on your thing. You know, maybe you love martial arts, then do martial arts and like do what you love doing and you'll definitely, you apply enough places, you will definitely get what you're uh, 
the German mother. So I just want to say a big thank you to you, Riash, for thank being you. with us today and sharing your insights yeah. for the first Instagram Live. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.